Well, welcome to the Church Office Podcast. My name's Gavin Smith, and if you're joining us on video, then here's a little wave. I'm excited to have Nigel Ring join us. I've never actually heard the word wicked and accountant <laughs> put in the same sentence. Hello and welcome to the Church Office Podcast. My name is Gavin Smith, and it's a joy to welcome you today to this administration admin and ops podcast. We love talking about the work of ministry behind the scenes, and I love getting guests on and my newest friend, and uh, yeah, looking forward to hearing is Anna Hodgson. Howie, welcome to the podcast. Thanks for coming. Hi, thanks for having me. It's great. So you've been in admin ops for five or six years. You're at Basingstoke Mosaic Church. Um, tell us a little bit about your role and how you got into it and uh, how long you've been serving. Um, so I have been going to Mosaic Basingstoke for about eight years and um, had got to know uh, the lead elder um, quite well there. At the time I wasn't working at all, I had young kids and so um, I wasn't working. And uh, we got to know each other and um, I think he probably spotted uh, something in me that was yeah. kind of strategic and operational. Um, and so we had a few conversations um, uh, and I was sort of, mm, it's not really a role for me. <laughs> not sure. <laughs> I don't know if it was imposter syndrome or can't be bothered syndrome, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. but uh, it felt like a, a big role and I didn't think I could do it. And then as went time sort of went on and we talked a bit more, I thought, actually, this is a way I can really serve. Um, yeah. I think one of the things about um, an operational or strategic gift is that you uh, don't probably recognize uh, how big your gift is. Yeah. You can tend to assume that everybody sees what you see uh, and then it's mm -hmm. obvious um and yeah. so i think it took me a while to come around to understand actually some of the stuff i was seeing and spotting wasn't that obvious so yeah. i think i probably got beaten down and uh gracious yeah. and thankfully took on the role and um i've been doing that now for five or six years and really love it really love yeah. it yeah it's great so you came from a, an art background and we were saying about your pictures and stuff at the back behind you in your home office uh um it's it's funny isn't it we were we were chatting before the podcast saying uh how different people come in to, to church administration in so many different ways and roles and um and history and uh yeah it's it's interesting isn't it yeah um we often say when we uh we have a uh, the forums that we're going to talk about a bit later we often say that you know there are not many people that have um, done a degree in church administration people tend to just roll into this um and i think a huge part of that is the gifting that yeah. people spot and recognize um but also as well what i love is finding out where people's um sort of historical skill sets lay mm -hmm. um and so uh that's really wonderful because you've got people that um sort of ex-lawyers or ex-HR or yeah. just a whole massive sort of variety of stuff and I mean for me I'm not well I was going to say I'm not sure that the art art really plays into it but it does because I end up doing all the artwork so which yeah. is that's a fun part of the job for me yeah. um, but I ran my own business as well so probably some of the um, the skills that I acquired there have been really helpful coming into this role. Oh, definitely. Yeah. If you've run your own business and it's it's so much of that, isn't it? And 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 I find that there's actually quite a lot of creativity, isn't there, in the role as in the church operations. You have to be creative with the resources you've got, with the people you've got, the gifting you've got. Um, yeah, coming up with new ideas sometimes. Um, yeah, no one else is doing that on our team. So it's, you know, that's something that does land with me. And I, I and that's the part I really quite enjoy. I say about being creative with our finances and stuff and and some uh, trustees go, well, that sounds a bit dodgy, but actually, no, being strategic and thinking about what are our priorities and do they match and and yeah. how could we invest or how could we bless people? Like, it just takes a bit of creative thought and I, I love all that kind of stuff, so. Yeah, I completely agree. Yeah, I find real life in that, definitely. Yeah, I, I love the finances. I, I don't find it a boring part of the job. I, I, I do, I, I really enjoy it. Not necessarily the spreadsheet, you know, drive, but just the yeah how can we use these how can we steward this that's going to yeah. really serve our church in a way and and I, I love I love to do that and it's a, a great part any standout parts of the job that you love what are your kind of like you see the list and I'm going to draw on to that particular task straight away um so I'm not I'm not big on the sort of detailed granular minutiae that yeah. stuff is uh 
it has got to be done. I don't yeah. find life in it. I love the um the the bigger sort of picture oversight. Yeah. So uh, sort of looking at an entire year. What I love to do is gather um, from different ministries and areas in the church what they'd love, what their vision is really. That's yeah. where I got to come from. So uh, how do they want to see God work this year? What do they think he's saying to them? Are there any changes? Are there any resource gaps? So I love that kind of uh, big picture moment where yeah. you see their pain points and you see their successes. And then it's about celebrating those successes pushing them on and, and helping equip um yeah. so that for me is uh, is something i really love to do that kind of oversight thing and then um i also um just really have a heart for taking care of people in it all yeah. i yeah. think um historically administ church administrators possibly rightly so have got a bit of a rap for being um officious and that yeah it's all about getting the job done and uh, yeah. not who you leave behind but um, I just really love to see people thrive and, and the most uh, come out of them and see their gifting grow yeah. by somehow being able to enable that and, and see a way forward. Yeah. The, the people part of it is so so important, isn't it? Because it isn't an administrator or ops person sat behind a desk, mm -hmm. you know, pumping out paperwork, you know, making sure that everything's done, you know, being the handbrake sometimes. But this is... This is about enabling ministry, isn't it, to happen? This is about caring for people, you know, releasing gifting, and you have to get to know people to be able to do that, don't you? And and I think that's, yeah, if you're not a people person as an admin and ops person, then you, you might not be in the right place. Um, yeah. And and I found that. Yeah, I agree. I've met a few um, who are phenomenally talented and mm. um, really get the job done, and probably get the job done better and more efficiently than I could but um, just I sometimes think it's a little bit like parenting it's like trying mm. to just let people fly a bit and yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Like sounding ideas off but invariably what you find is um other people have better ideas <laughs> and so yeah. then it's like yeah. great so now I can make that a reality I know how to do that but it's great to hear where you're coming from and, and how you think it's going to work best so yeah. Yeah, that's true. And let's let's fill the, the listeners in a bit how we met. So I, I was traveling with Nigel. Nigel was speaking at, at something that you're involved in. Tell us a little bit about the, you call it the ETA forum, don't you? What does that stand for? Yeah, so it's called um, Equipping the Administrators. Yeah. Um, so over the last probably four, five, six years within Commission, which is um, a sphere within New Frontiers, uh, there have been several equipping forums or or groups set up, so equipping the evangelists. Um, and then the one that I'm involved in is equipping the administrators. So I think uh, this grew, uh, I was working with a guy called Miles Jarvis and um, there was a, it was evident that there was a need uh, around church administrators and sort of ops and strategists that, um, it's quite a siloed workplace sometimes, I think. Mm -hmm. And also uh, it was acknowledging the fact that when you come into that role, you have to be an expert in everything, really. Um, yeah. so no one person has those skill sets really fully developed. Um, so the, the sort of seed idea, I think, behind it was how can we work together uh, and create a, a sort of a learning forum or a hub together where we can share ideas and resources and um, also as well uh, struggles, I guess, really, where people mm -hmm. can come and say, yeah. I'm not sure what to do about this. Anybody got any ideas? How has this worked out for you? Um, and so that was the uh, sort of start point. Um, and then um, uh, COVID hit. So uh, that was quite helpful for us because it forced us to do um, a Zoom sort of forum, yeah. uh, which I think we possibly may have thought about anyway. But I think uh, people's mindsets, I know certainly for me, it was all about in-person meeting prior to that, um, which is great. But uh, we're drawing on people from all over the country. Um, and you're talking about busy people. I mean, if you're an administrator, yeah. you're always busy. So uh, we started um, sort of once a term or maybe once every quarter doing kind of a Zoom meeting where we got together and we had a topic. We'd quite often have a speaker um, and then we'd have questions. Um, and that was kind of um, how we started, really. Yeah. 
I, I think these things are great and um and they serve people isn't it because there's often conferences and training for for leaders elders have forums where they can get together but the behind the scenes staff yeah. don't always get that opportunity and, and i think you're right you can feel quite alone sometimes but um you know different people have lots of different experience across that kind of spectrum but you're right you 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 do feel sometimes like you're working on this yourself and you've got to know all the answers and yeah to have a place where you can go help me i'm you know i've got a building project to do or i've got to do this what what did you guys do it's it's lovely in it to see that interaction and and see those relationships build so yeah it's been um so helpful like i mean i think for me now there are two parts so the, the meeting together part and then we also have uh like an online forum and mm -hmm. both are equally helpful um yeah. you know i've got a safeguarding issue or yeah. uh, has anybody done this for the youth or how do you manage this with your cat clients and uh you find that people are really happily ping over a document or a policy and it's like, oh, great. That's, you know, yeah, yeah. a day of work there for me um, has been saved. And um, and I think as well, um, just finding out that everyone uh, faces the same difficulties. Mm -hmm. So I know particularly coming out of um, the pandemic, uh, it was, I think it was probably global, actually. You know, people like, oh, I can't get volunteers. We can't get yeah. people on our yeah. motors. And yeah. um Whilst it didn't solve anything, knowing that everyone else was having the same sort of battle, it was so helpful to know, okay, this is a thing. So yeah. now we have to work together to find a way through. It's not yeah. just a, a my church or my church family thing. This is a change in, in how people's lives are. So, Yeah, yeah. so true. Is. Yeah, it's great. And so how often do you guys get together? Is that a kind of quarterly or in-person thing once a year or something? What do you guys do? Uh, so we have uh, two sort of Zoom meetings um, throughout the year. So that's usually uh, sort of February, March time. Um, and then again, June, July. Um, and those tend to be just a couple of hours. So we'll have uh, a guest speaker and then we'll go into breakout rooms and yeah. um, sort of drill down a bit and then quite often come back and share information. And then once a year in October, we have an in-person uh, meeting. Yeah. Which is great. And so that's held at different venues around the country. And uh, we have had some phenomenal speakers. We've had um, Sharon Clark has spoken there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. She was exceptional. Yeah. Um, uh, Becky Flood, again, just yeah. the thing that I've really loved is um, it's not – an administrator's day particularly so uh sharon was really about um just calling people up in their gifting and mm -hmm. saying okay it's great you are an administrator but actually this is god given and let's look yeah. in the scripture about about where this has come from and it's it's yeah. a really precious gift um and let's encourage each other and and again obviously with her she's very prophetic and um yeah. That was just such a great day. And, and we've had the same again when Nigel came recently and, yeah. and Becky. Just been brilliant. People have just kind of bought whatever's been on their heart uh, and it's served us so well. Um, yeah, good. Nothing but sort of excellent feedback from those days. People have been so encouraged. And I think as well, just gathering together in that room, as you say, if you're a lead elder, invariably there are conferences and meetings where you're together and you get to catch yeah. up. Just gathering these like-minded people um, who invariably are serving, so it's lovely for them to come to something where they can just sit and receive as well. So, yeah, that's that's yeah. how. Yeah. Fab. No, I love that. It sounds great. And and as we were chatting earlier, wasn't it? And we've had Nigel on the podcast, and we've had Terry on the podcast. You know, new frontiers have benefited hugely, haven't they? From from this model of of you know two leaders who have got totally different gifting but have worked brilliantly together for 40 odd years um you know that kind of visionary leader of terry and then the the making it happen you know administration admin ops that that nigel's brought um yeah there aren't many movements that have had leaders that long with that kind of gifting that i can think of and and that must be a blessing for new frontiers for you guys as as leaders talk about you know the two roles working together in churches. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I can only um, sort of speak personally to that. And um, I know, I mean, I work uh, very closely with our lead elder 
um, and with our, our staff team and to an extent our, our trustees and our elders as well. And uh, it's such an interesting but sort of special dynamic, really. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Uh, and you feel heard and you feel seen, but there's opportunity uh, for sort of robust discussion. And I love that because I, I certainly don't ever imagine that um, just because that's my role, I know what the yeah. answer is. Yeah. It's never the case, but I just love uh, that kind of open forum to share ideas and, and everybody is working towards the, the same mission, yeah. vision and goal. Um, and it's a really uh, strong base, actually, yeah. because everything that we do as a church family is filtered through that sort of relationship and that team. Yeah. Uh, and I think uh, it, it makes it quite well rounded when it comes to decision making. And uh, but I, I agree with you. I've not uh, I've not really seen it modelled um, particularly yeah. elsewhere. So it's something really special. Yeah, it really is. And and I, I could just talk about my experience. Our, our elders here um, have been fantastic. You know, they they see the gifting in me. They give room for it. They respect it. And in the same way, I'm respecting their gifting and their thoughts and their vision and what they're trying to build and do. And, and you know, it, it's, it's a joy to work here and it's a joy to work in that environment. And I know for some people listening to the podcast, that might not be their their experience and do you know what? it is tough when you're you're undervalued you're not given the room that you feel like you're the handbrake all the time that's bringing the what about this what about that don't like that that's not going to work um that's a that's a hard place to be in isn't it but i think i've had to be i've been doing it wrong for 20 years so i've had to just learn to be patient with it and 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 i i think there's um the last 10 years have been brilliant you know but yeah. it does take a bit of time doesn't it to set that and to get that going um and for that respect to be there, that different gifting to be shown. Yeah, I completely agree. I think as well, um, I know for me, I've had to um, sort of change my expectations around timing because I think part of my gift is let's get it done, let's get it done. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I've had to learn, yeah, let's get it done, but not at any cost. Let's yeah. get it done. And one of the things that our elders are really uh, big on is um, we go together or we don't go at all. Yeah, and, um, yeah. That's such a blessing. It yeah, was a frustration at times because I'm like, oh, come on, you know, it, it's mm -hmm. obvious. But actually, uh, just the strength of people uh, with the different ways they process and, yeah. and we eventually arrive at a decision and then, yes, yeah. we go together. Yeah. That's yeah. Fun. So true. If we can get those things aligned, isn't it? You know, our elders, our operations staff, our budget. Our, our strategic plan where we go and what we want to do when we get all that in line it's it is a very powerful thing isn't it it's it's a very you know strong thing to be moving forward together in that way and and yeah i've certainly appreciated that and and when you do stand back and watch you go yeah god's been good to us in this and there's there's grace at work and we can we can recognize it and enjoy it um yeah i love that well i know you've got a big heart for for people and for staff and and you know people that are listening to this are in the middle of sorting out Christmas. And for us, it's like end of year financial accounts because we do year end is December. January, I know we're doing a retreat and lots of churches are, are away and there's so much prep to do to be ready to, to go and say, right, how do we do last year on the finances? What are we doing this year? Um, speak into this a little bit. How, how are you caring for people and, and working that stuff through yourself? Um with varying degrees of success probably <laughs> yeah yeah um, it doesn't matter how uh how kind of well i think we've covered caring for people i've always missed something uh and that's you know always a source of pain to me but then it's just about going and saying i'm really sorry i didn't communicate or because as you say there's so many different mm. things going on um and uh <laughs> One of the things I find is that is uh, I'm really trying to work on uh, streamlining our comms. So it's very easy to have offline conversations mm -hmm. or sort of emails involving a couple of people, which is absolutely fine. It's crit critical for getting things done. But then um, I find it very easy then to forget to bring everybody else along. Yeah. So that is something I'm really trying to work on is making sure that uh, 
almost being really pedantic with it, that, that we are um, communicating at the right time, in the right process, with the right people, um, and making sure that everybody is listened to and that everybody hears the information they need. Uh, so that for me is a big way of caring for people it is I feel like there's value if you say to people it matters that you know this yeah. Uh, yeah. or we hear how you feel about this um, we went out yesterday for a staff Christmas lunch so that was great nice. um, that's that. a really nice thing to do just to take people out and just to have fun together we went for a lovely long walk first um, so everybody gets time just to chat and to chill out and just to say we really appreciate what you do. Thank you. Um, that is something that we uh, endeavour to do throughout the year. Um, yeah. sort of celebrating uh, people's successes. Um, yeah. Again, yeah. I think we can do that better, but just thanking people publicly mm -hmm. uh, and encouraging people um, mm. to spot the things that they've done and speak into that and say it was yeah. really good. I mean, our... our Elder Martin is really, really good at remembering to say to people, it was great how you did. So I heard him doing it yesterday at the mall. I just heard him chatting to someone and I was like, yeah, that's, it means so much that somebody's yeah. recognized something that you've, you've done. Um, I mean, the other thing that, uh, again, varying degrees of success here, is, but just trying to put boundaries in for people. Mm -hmm. um, and so making sure if you are working all day Saturday and all day Sunday on the carol service, please take some time back. Yeah, in, yeah. Um, it's just such a busy season. Please make sure over Christmas, mm -hmm. really turn off your emails. Um, you know, quite often we'll try and do a sort of system where uh, an elder may be on call each day. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so people actually have that proper break um, and putting yeah. that in place. We shut the office. Uh, this year it's for a good week and so that's quite good in fact this year's fallen really well date wise because you kind of we've got a christmas eve service yeah we've got a christmas eve service and then very little really in between so yeah. hopefully that'll give people a, a week off uh we're trying to um give the kids teams a couple of weeks off so um having sort of family service around uh, the carols um and then uh, endeavouring if we can on New Year's Eve to uh, we'll need some of the core kids team but to just have other volunteers yeah. be able to come in and, and just give them a rest so I think um, it's sort of marginal gains for me just trying yeah. to spot if we did that that would make that a little bit easier for that person or for that team and um, also trying to scale back uh, what we do as well I think sometimes we can go really huge around Christmas. Um, and then, you know, what's the fruit of that? Um, mm. People are sort of run ragged making pallet Christmas trees and, you know, <laughs> and yeah. thinking that through, I don't know. There's lots yeah. of different voices that speak into that because everyone's got their kind of own drive, which is really right. Yeah. Um, but sometimes just stepping back, back and saying, okay, we don't have to, do this that way we just need to be who we are as family um yeah make sure that everyone is cared for in the busyness of it um it is so true yeah we, we've got the same same things because we, we tend to miss a service in between christmas and new year and this yeah. year because it falls on the 31st we're going to we're going to do something and it is a family service um but all of that prep has to be done prior to christmas doesn't it you know someone has to arrange the sermon for that week the music for that week the kids for that week you know um and so yeah we we are bringing everything forward and and um it's it's just being realistic say oh we'd love to have a thanksgiving service with you know 20 testimonies and and a, and a baptism and and you're like how are we gonna actually do that who's gonna come in and set the pool up and who's gonna who's gonna coordinate all these you know all the folk in our church to do a thanksgiving you know yeah. uh, because you can't have 20 <laughs> and so yeah so it does put pressure and, and yeah we've got a tendency to go bigger each year so you do something you know carol service really well and you go right what can we do next year to make it better and and we put pressure on ourselves no one else is going all oh, right yeah what do we need to do and i think it needs a voice in there and i think that's probably what my job has been this this thing to help staff is 
do we really need to do this? Are we putting pressure on ourselves? Have we actually got the time? Um, the other practical thing I've been doing is checking in on staff holidays. I don't know if you're like me. I've still got five days holiday left to go. And I'm thinking, how am I going to fit this in? And I look at myself and go, right, I wonder who else is. So I check the holiday calendar and I'm like, right, I need to have a conversation with two or three people. <laughs> say, how are you actually going to do this? You need to do this. Um, yeah, I don't know if you have that same issues going on. Yeah, is, there's a constant, um, <clears throat> sort of my constant mantra, which I know everyone's so bored of, is, uh, you know, just kind of checking in and keeping accountable. And uh, yeah. in a lot of other industries, when you say keeping accountable, probably the uh, underlying of that is uh, making sure you've done what you should have done. Yeah. Whereas uh, in church work, it's more like, making sure you haven't done <laughs> yeah. everything yeah. and you know that why is there a week yeah. and a half holiday left uh when was the last time you had a day off and yeah it's a it's a constant battle i think it's really hard as well it's this whole boundary thing because uh the lines between church work and being part of a church family are quite often blurred and yeah. so it's really hard to know well did I do that because I'm serving my church family or did I do that because it's part of my role? And yeah, yeah. yeah. I think it's a good tension. It's a good tension to constantly look at and address to make sure that you're, um, you're getting the rest and the break that you need. But yeah, I don't know what the answer is yet. I'll let yeah. you know. It's a yeah. whole podcast on its own, isn't it? I know. Well, if you're listening and you've got any ideas, um, please, please share and please get in contact. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, from you and yeah it is the staffing part is is the hardest part i think isn't it is caring for people making sure we get what we want to get done but also just go you know there are so many staff workers that i see that contact me that have been in the point of burnout been just not cared for and um yeah the reality is i have to make sure that you know even our staff that i'm doing that um and caring for folks so um yeah a message there out so and i thank you so much for coming on the podcast thanks for sharing all this great wisdom and knowledge and you know stuff that you've got going on thanks for serving the administrators that are working in new frontiers i'm i'm thrilled that there's there's support and and i love that and that's my heart for the church office what can we do to encourage the behind the scenes ministry how can we equip them and serve them and if there's anything that the church office can do to support you guys in new frontiers please please get in contact and uh yeah we'd love that um if you've got any questions from today or you'd like to connect in any way, please contact us at questions at thechurchoffice.co.uk. Please jump onto the website and check out our videos, podcasts, if there's any policy documents, anything that we can do to serve you. We might have something on the site that might be useful for you. Please check it out and use it. But from us, have a lovely Christmas. Anna, thank you so much. And we'll see you next time on the podcast. Thanks, Gavin. Bye for now.